So here in lecture 12.8, we're going to finish our exploration of timing, and we're going to finish our exploration of the wire geometry electricity side of timing by applying the Elmore delay to some interesting examples. The thing that's really beautiful about the Elmore delay is that for any wire that can be modeled as an RC tree, um, I can ask a really detailed timing question. So uh, you tell me all of the lengths of the segments, you tell me all of the widths of the segments, you tell me what's driving the wire, you tell me what the wire is driving the driven gates. I can tell you any delay information you want. You want to take one of those wires and make it a little bit longer, I can tell you what happens. You want to take a segment of a complicated piece of fan out kind of a wire and say, uh-oh, the router had a little problem and it made that wire a little bit longer or a lot longer. What did it do to my timing? I can answer that. You want to go play some interesting electrical optimizations, grab a segment of a complicated distribution network, grab the wire and make it a little bit wider and ask what happens to all the outputs. The Elmore delay can do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a lot of little examples of wire geometry. We're going to walk the tree and we're going to show what happens as we change element values, widths and lengths of the wire, and show you how great the Elmore delay is for calculating that. And then we're going to wrap all of this stuff back together by saying, look, now for a routed wire, I can get you a pretty accurate delay value. And so I can put that back into the delay graph to do the static timing analysis. And so all of the questions we asked at the beginning, I synthesized it, I mapped it, I placed it, I routed it, does it actually run at a gigahertz? I can actually answer those things now in a pretty accurate way. So let's go do a bunch of Elmore examples to finish off our analysis of timing. So let's go have some fun with the Elmore delay. So first, um, the Elmore delay formulas are just immensely useful, uh, you know, hugely practical, widely used. They're simple enough for layout folks to use them in algorithms, but they're accurate enough that they beat simple length-based sort of schemes. Uh, I will admit that it is not the only model that exists. Uh, there are more sophisticated models, um, and they're not so accurate that you can avoid some later verification with, with um, more sophisticated electrical models. The Elmore model is a so-called single time constant model. It says, if you were to model my circuit, as a, uh, an equivalent circuit with one resistor and one capacitor, what R times C value would you use? Um, you know, you can also model it with uh, two equivalent R's and C's, three equivalent R's and C's, four equivalent R's and C's. That's what a higher order model is. You can get uh, better models of more sophisticated behavior that way. We don't need to do that. Um, we're just going to go with the single, um, the single time constant model because it's so easy to compute. Um, lots and lots of applications, but for us, you know, we can take a real, a real routed wire with real geometry and we can build a real delay for it, um, a unique delay to each of its pins, um, and we can use it for something like, uh, you know, static timing. So here's a very simple little tree circuit. Um, the electrical parameters lowercase r is 1, lowercase c is 2, so the resistance is lowercase r times the length divided by the width. The capacitance is um, c times the width times the length. So this is just a little tree circuit, you know, um, from uh, node A to B, the width is 1 and the length is 20. From nodes B to C and B to D, the width is 1 and the length is 5. From nodes D to, uh, from C to E, C to F, D to G, and D to H, those four segments, the width is 1 and the length is 2. Um, if we just take one of those segments, let's say the width equals 1, length equals 5 segment from node B to node D, um, the first thing you do is you just calculate the resistance and the capacitance, and you, you, know, you build the R and the two Cs of the pi model, so there's nodes B and D, the resistor from B to D, and the two capacitors on the end. If you just run the formulas, you'll find that the resistance is 5, the capacitance is 10, we put half the capacitance at each node, so there's a 5 at B and a 5 at D, and of course remember that every wire segment creates a capacitor on each end, Okay, so there's a couple of more capacitors you have to add at node D. There's three capacitors um, at node D, and you have three capacitors to add together to get the, the final C value for that node of the tree. So here's what you get. So here's the RC tree for the interconnect alone. Um, I'm showing you the tree on the left, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Um, I'm again showing you the highlighted wire from B to D, and on the right-hand side, I'm showing you the RC tree. Right, so from A to B, there's a resistor of 20. From B to C and B to D, there's resistors of 5. From C to E and F, from D to G and H, there's resistors of 2. There's a capacitor of 20 at node A, 30 at node B, 9 at each of nodes C and D, and 2 at nodes E, F, G, and H. Right? 
Um, and I've got the highlighted uh, five resistor, which is the BD resistor, just so you, you can have you can be calibrated. All right, so that's what the core of the wire looks like if we turn it into an RC tree. Now, we still have to add a driver and a driven gate. So let's say there's a driver um, that adds a new node at the top of the tree, AA, with a resistance of 20, um, and that there's a load representing each driven gate at nodes E, F, G, and H with a load 1. Well, um, I'm going to get the same tree again from A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, only now there's going to be a resistor going from this new node AA at the top to node A of size 20. Okay, so that's just you know where the driver goes. And then each load is going to add one more to the capacitors at nodes E, F, G, and H at the bottom of the tree. So those capacitors go from being size 2 to size 3, but everything else is the same. Right? And so here's my RC tree. I can actually ask a delay question of this. Now, since this is a symmetric tree, I've only got to compute one path. I mean, each path is the same. There's a 20 resistor from AA to A, from A to B, a resistor of 20, B to C or D, resistor of 5, C to E and F, D to G and H, resistors of 2. Um, symmetric capacitor, well, there's one capacitor at uh, 20 at node A, 30 at node B, but symmetric capacitors C and D are 9, and symmetric capacitors of size 3 at E, F, G, and H. So remember the recipe, you set tau as a 0, you walk down the route to the leaf, at every node, you multiply the resistor you're on by all the capacitors in front of you. So let's just walk down the right-hand path to node H. And what do you get? You know, so you get the, the resistor of size 20 between A, A, and A multiplied by 20 plus 30 plus 2 9s plus 4 3s. Going further, the resistor from node A to B is 20 times the capacitor 30 plus 2 9s plus 4 3s. Okay, resistor of size 5 between nodes B and D, um, 1, 9 plus 2, 3s, that's the capacitance. Resistor of size 2 from node D to H multiplied by a single capacitor 3 in front of it. Add that all up, if I did it right, 2,881 inappropriate units. Right? Very easy, very simple. I can calculate the delay to any node in my RC tree. But wait, there's more. There's other cool things. You know, the layout can do bad things to your, to your placement. It can do bad things to your wiring. Um, what if the length of the wire gets bad, right? Or even the width of the wire. We'll do that next. So, you know, let's change the length on one wire segment. Suppose we reroute it or something, and suddenly it's a horrible wire. So the wire from B to D is this horrible green snarl. And so instead of having a nice short length of 5, as it had previously, it now has a length of 40. Okay, and so if you run the formulas again, you get a resistor of size 40, and you get capacitors also of size 40 at nodes B and D. The resistance increases for this much longer wire. The capacitance increases for this much longer wire. This whole circuit is different. It is no longer symmetric. Um, now it's got a right side and a left side. So I've got a little tiny picture of the, of the sort of the, the wire segment on the left side of this uh, slide, 85. Um, let's ask the question, what's the delay to the leaves? So um, things are a little different now. You know, between uh, node A, A, and A, there's still a resistor of, of size 20, and at node A, a capacitor of 20. From A to B, a resistor of 20. But now from B to D, a resistor of 40, and as opposed to from B to C, a resistor of 5. You know, that, that green wire is longer. The capacitor at node B got bigger. It's now 65. The capacitor at node D got bigger. It's now 44 because that wire is longer. It's got more capacitance. This tree's not symmetric. The capacitor at node C is now 9. All the resistors from CE to CF and DG to DH, those are all still 2. And the capacitors at the bottom are all still 3. Um, if you were to run the, the, the Elmore delay formula down the right-hand side, you're going to find the delay 7,606. If you run it down the left-hand side, you're going to find it's 5,681. Well, that's interesting. Um, I'm not surprised that the delay got bigger on the right-hand side because the wire is longer. I am perhaps surprised that the delay got bigger on the left-hand side. I'm going to put a big star there. Why did that happen? And the answer is, I have a sophisticated electrical model here. Um, that big wire has a whole bunch more capacitance. The current that's coming out of the driving gate right, has to fill everybody's buckets. So as well as filling the buckets of the left-hand gates to sort of drive their capacitors to a voltage that makes a 1 fast enough, I'm also filling the buckets associated with the big green long detouring wire. 
So what's interesting is that even though you expect the wire to make the gates on the right hand side slower, the wire makes the gates on the left hand side slower too just because it's got more capacitance and that's a real accurate honest sort of physical assessment of the problem. The thing that's beautiful about the Elmore delay is that it just works. right? It works for the real actual physical geometric shape of the wire um, and it gets the delay from the driver to each of the individual fan out points in the wire correct. That's a great thing. You can even do cool things like take the width of the wire and make it wider. People play games like this when they're routing complicated electrical artifacts like clocks. Okay, so what if we take the wire from B to D and we make it wider now and not longer? Well, what happens is that the resistance gets smaller, but the capacitance gets bigger. So the right side has a delay of 6,436, the left side a delay of 6,481. So, you know, yeah, um, the right side delay is different than the left side delay, but in a different way. Um, the Elmore delay allows us to play these kinds of parameter games with our wires, to balance things, to sort of compute correct and reasonably accurate delays from the driving point to any of the driven gates. It's a really great model. It's really simple. So we sort of, sort of finally fulfilled the promise that we had at the start of this lecture, which is that if you had gates and wires, I can actually model everything. So the first half of this lecture was how do you deal with the gates? ATs, RATs, slacks, algorithms that walk through gigantic delay graphs with millions of nodes and touch them not, in a not very complicated way, ATs, RATs, and slacks maze routing like algorithms so you can enumerate paths in delay order, but you needed a delay model for the wires. Oh, the Elmore delay is a perfectly good first order model for the delay for the wires because you can go from any driving point to any driven point on the wire. Do people really use this delay metric? Yeah, absolutely. This is really famous and really helpful and really widely used. Not the only delay metric people use, it's the first real delay metric that people use. So during placement, I can estimate the wire shape even with just like a simple Steiner tree or a simple minimum spanning tree, something that doesn't really require me to route the wire, I can get a very quick delay estimate. And, after, and, and you know, analytical placers will even do things like make a very sort of a crude but non-physical model of the wire, build an Elmore delay for that model of the wire, and then sort of use that to adjust the weights on the wires you know, in our, like in our quadratic placer, if it looks like your wire is really long and it's got, you know, really long delay, you can up the weight on the wire so you can try to rerun the placer and make the gates get closer together so that's not such a bad thing. So it's a, you know, it's a beautiful, simple, analytical kind of a model. It's easy to compute. It is, like so many things in this class, a walk on a tree, which is kind of an amazing unifying theme for so many things in this CAD class. Um, and it makes it possible for us to actually build a complete delay graph for a static timing model with a delay for the gates and a delay for the wires and accurately handle things. So, you know, in summary, interconnect has a huge impact on chip speed. You cannot ignore the delays caused by the electrical properties of real wires, and the layout tools are responsible for, you know, a big part of the timing guarantee. The upstream tools determine the levels of logic, the gate counts, the fan outs, and things like that. The physical tools are responsible for how long the wires end up and where the gates go, and all of these impact the wire length and the distribution. So today, to handle that sort of thing, individual wires are really modeled as complex circuits. The RC tree is the most useful model, the sort of the foundational model. The Elmore delay is the easiest thing to compute. There are other things that we can compute. There are other estimators beyond the Elmore delay, but we don't have, as my assumption of your background for this class, you don't have enough circuits for me to sort of go talk about things. We can use these things for verification. We can use these things for layout optimizations, like optimizing clocks and things like that. But here we are. We sort of we come full circle. Um, we're sort of you know wrapping things up here with a logic side analysis. You know how do you deal with uh, ats and rats and slacks, and a layout side analysis for how do you actually uh, you know, build the geometry of a wire, build the tree, build the RC tree, walk the tree, and get a sort of a detailed analysis. In the real world of CAD for, you know, big complicated ASICs, big complicated systems on chip, people are always going back and forth between working on the logic and working on the layout. So I hope you now have a sort of a reasonable sense of, of you know, how these things sort of, sort of, sort of connect. And so um, that's it for timing.